There are moments in each of our lives when something happens that changes us forever. That is certainly true of Wendy Wagner, an actress from the 60s, that first caught my attention on a TV show called The Green Hornet. And here's the thing. The moment in question isn't something that happened to her directly. It happened to a friend who was also an up-and-coming star. More on that in just a moment, but first let me introduce myself. Hi folks, my name is Dave Sundstrom, and I like to think of myself as something of a pop culture historian, especially when it comes to music, movies, and television. Simply put, I love talking about this stuff. So with that said, let's get rolling. So before I explain exactly what happened, let me provide a little context. Wendy Wagner, History 101, if you will. And let's start with this show, The Green Hornet. Despite being produced by William Dozier, the same guy responsible for the Adam West Batman TV series. The Green Hornet wasn't campy, it was played straight. The action was ramped up and the laughs were kept to a minimum, and the cast was great. Van Williams, Bruce Lee, and of course Wendy, as Britt Reed's secretary and one of only three people on the show who knew that Reed was, in reality, the Green Hornet. And while the ratings for the show weren't abysmal, they weren't as stratospheric as Batman's were during the first season of that show. And as a result, ABC, the network that the show ran on, never had the same level of enthusiasm for the Green Hornet. But I really do think the show deserved a second season. And the show deserved to run for a full hour. 30 minutes just wasn't enough for the kind of character development that this show richly deserved. Wendy's character, Lenore Case, is a perfect example of that. While there were hints that she and Britt might end up being romantically linked in one way or another, the show's writers were never able to flesh out Lenore's backstory enough to warrant more time spent with the character. Wendy did the best that she could with the time given during each episode, but truthfully, she was even more woefully underused than Bruce Lee was. Talk about missed opportunities. By the late 60s, Wendy had been in show business for almost a decade. She was originally discovered by the director Billy Wilder while they were filming the classic motion picture, Some Like It Hot near Coronado Island in California. Unfortunately, because she had not yet graduated from high school, her parents encouraged her to pass on Billy's offer. With diploma in hand, when she finally had graduated from high school, Wendy was offered another role by Billy Wilder, this time for one of my all-time favorite movies, The Apartment. However, the role wasn't appealing to her, and she passed on the opportunity. Instead, Wendy began landing gigs on television shows. Her debut was in an episode of Wagon Train that aired in 1960, titled The Luke Grant Story. Throughout her life, Wendy had developed a true love for the ocean and all things aquatic, and as a result, many of her television gigs were actually as an underwater stunt double. One of the shows that continued to provide Wendy with work was the Lloyd Bridges vehicle, Sea Hunt. Wendy's big screen debut was in 1964's Rio Conchos, starring Richard Boone, Stuart Whitman, Tony Franciosa, and Jim Brown. And other movie roles would follow. Among those movies was the 1968 film, Rosemary's Baby. Wendy's final movie appearance was in 1969's The Guns of the Magnificent Seven. After that, nothing. No more movies, and even more surprisingly, with the Green Hornet cancelled after just one season, no more television. So what happened? What would cause Wendy to just walk away from it all? Well, from everything that I can tell, this might have had more than a little to do with it. You see, Wendy had been very close to Sharon Tate. In fact, for a time, they had been roommates. I've got to believe that when things like that happen, horrible things, traumatic things, sometimes you start to look at life just a little bit differently. You see, certain things begin to matter less, and there are moments when the only choice one has is to turn your back on whatever was the catalyst for such tremendous pain and sorrow. And in Wendy's case, at least part of that was the entertainment industry. So instead of trying to land her next role, Wendy, who by the way after a second failed marriage was now a single parent, spent her days doing the things that she truly loved, creating moments that would help her to heal. Day in and day out, she'd grab the kids and go swimming or fishing, 
and when she really wanted to clear her mind to be one with nature, she'd grab her surfboard and spend a little solitary time riding the waves. Along with her love of anything water-related, Wendy also cultivated a talent for art. So much so that as time crept along, she became a renowned artist who often had her own shows both in the U.S. and internationally. There is a fun clip from 1990 here on YouTube where both Wendy and Van Williams make an appearance on what appears to be a local TV show called Hal Land. I'll post a link to it in the description of this video because in addition to reminiscing with Van about the good old days on the Green Hornet, she also shares some of her amazing artwork. I don't know exactly when Wendy was diagnosed with cancer, but I do know that she passed away in 1997 after courageously battling the disease. She was 55, roughly the same age that I am now. Way, way too young. According to Wikipedia, after her passing, her body was cremated and her ashes were lovingly scattered upon the Pacific Ocean. For someone who loved the water so much, that was clearly the right thing to do. Getting back to the Green Hornet, I really do wish that the show had gotten the green light for that second season. Oh well, I guess I'll just be grateful for the 26 wonderful episodes that exist and that there is a network, even better a free over-the-air network, that continues to play them for fans like myself to enjoy. Hey, I've got a couple more videos that I think you might really like. There they are. Pick one. I love both of those. You really can't go wrong. But before you go, thank you so much for watching.